there were preclinical studies done with the hair, hair bulb. They, you obtain the hair bulb uh, culture from, let's say, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, facelift uh, surgery and uh, the, the uh, cuts of skin. And then you, you, you can use this culture uh, and uh, evaluate uh, various products, uh, how they affect uh, hair growth. Mm -hmm. And um, just to give you a, ba a quick background of, of the hair growth, we have three phases that, that the hair grows, which is uh, the anagen phase, which is the growth phase. Uh, basically, uh, this is the longest phase, lasting approximately 1,000 days, and most of our hair, let's say 90%, is anagen phase, you know. Then you, you have a catagen phase, which is basically when the hair is uh, a, a ready to, to leave our body, but uh, still is staying in our scalp or wherever we, we apply a finger to show the hair. And then uh, we have uh, the uh, telogen phase, which is the actual phase that uh, the hair actually is uh, gradually leaving the, uh, the, the scalp or the, the the body. So the uh, condition is called telogen effluvium, uh, like mm -hmm. flow of something from, from the skin out. And this is the condition uh, that uh, if it is in excess uh, departure of the cells, of the, of the hair prematurely from, from the scalp, then we have balding problem. Okay. And uh, this uh, uh, typically, telogen flu uh, the, the telogen phase, the hair intelligent phase are in approximately uh, 10 to 15 percent are in this telogen uh, phase, and rest of them are, are in anagen um, uh, and a uh, couple of percentages in uh, catagen phase. So, if you have more than 20 percent intelligent uh, phase of the hair, then you have problem of, of uh, a supply and demand. <laughs> so, okay. so you you actually uh, you, you you have uh, increased demand, but unfortunately mm -hmm. there is no supply. No supply. You know, so so you know th that's just to in in summary to to uh, bring uh, the the issue of of the uh, baldness and how ceramides are uh, fitting into this uh, um, uh, problem. Now, uh, there was a study that I mentioned to you where where, where was ex vivo study or effect of on the hair bulbs culture uh, of the application of the ceramide in, in, in cultures. And what uh, the researchers found is that the uh, proliferation of the cells or mitosis of the cells in surrounding the bulb were increased in the presence of the, of the uh, ceramide versus control. What it means is that you have Increase mitotic activity means that life is back to your hair, okay? And of course, I, I, I'm putting this almost in borderline simplistic way, but uh, because otherwise everybody say, okay, so baldness is solved. <laughs> no, well, it's not exactly solved, but, but the point is this, that it is, it is just that ceramide can increase the activity of the cells that are feeding the hair bulb. And this is uh, the, the, the type of the cells that are doing this are so-called follicular fibroblast. The f follicular fi fibroblast is a very interesting uh, cell that actually is uh, very much supported by ceramides. And I will tell just a few things about this in, in, in uh, next. But follicular ceramide that feed the hair bulb is specifically stimulated by the ceramide, which is very important because we may through this application, we may prolong the, or we may, we may decrease the, the hair falling off our scalp in the, this uh, telogen phase. So we can drop the percentage from above 20% back to 10%, for example. And that's good enough. So, so that's, that's just to tell you that ceramide is not only protector of the skin, but also and again, I'm bringing up this issue of signaling. It signals the fibroblasts mm -hmm. that are surrounding the bulb of the hair to feed the hair. And the hair say, responds by staying longer in our scalp. That's a good deal. That's a good thing. Yeah. Now, 
talking about fibroblasts, you know, we, we have skin fibroblasts that uh, are uh, papillar and retic reticular in addition to the follicular fibroblasts that are obviously producers of collagen, elastin, mm -hmm. and here is a very interesting set of in vitro experiments where the ceramides added to the culture of fibroblast increase the collagen production. And of course, the elasticity of skin and also hydration of skin depends on how much collagen we have. Mm -hmm. And uh, fibroblast is a very finicky cell because this cell actually um, uh, ages very fast and irreversibly. Well, what's it's not aging irreversibly, <laughs> but uh, okay, let's call it that this is particular irreversible aging. So, so that, that's, uh, you know, increase of collagen production with ceramide. Ceramide also protects the um, fibroblasts from the uh, free radicals. And again, this, uh, this is very important role because if, if you injure the, the manufacture of the collagen, it's gone. Mm -hmm. so, by the, so that's in vitro experiment showing that actually addition to, to the in vitro culture of the, of the ceramide can protect um, ceramide from being injured by free radicals. And uh, finally, there is uh, leukocyte elastase. Uh, this is an enzyme that basically uh, cuts and dissolves the elastic fibers produced by the fibroblasts. So it is almost like uh, production is for nothing. If you add the uh, ceramide to this type of in vitro culture, the, the, the enzyme that cuts the elastic fibers is just uh, uh, down downgraded. So it is somehow inhibited. Uh, we may discuss how it is inhibited, but you basically prevent the degradation of the enzyme that would destroy the elastic fibers produced by fibroblasts.